Hi everybody, my name is Eva Cheng and I'm the Deputy Director of the UTS Women in Engineering and IT program. So thanks for joining me today, where we'll talk a bit more about the scholarship opportunities available for women studying engineering and IT with us. So what are the different types of scholarships that you can apply for? What is the application and interview process? And some tips and tricks and advice on this application process. So why Women in Engineering and IT? Well, our program has a long history and we're here because we want to enable students to be able to study what they'd like to be able to study and what the careers they'd like to pursue without having gender as a barrier. Why does this matter? It's because engineers and IT professionals design products, solutions and services for the greater community. And if we don't have a diverse voice of the people in the community embedded into designs, then we're not going to be able to have the impact and to benefit those who are going to be using these technologies. So our program has a lot of different initiatives. We reach out to early primary school to help build the confidence of girls interested in science, technology, engineering and math and working with teachers and parents as well, including in the classroom. We also continue reaching out into high school to share what are the career opportunities, study opportunities in engineering and IT? What are those emerging technologies that you could have an impact with, including drones and cybersecurity and perhaps civil engineering, building safer structures? And through all of these outreach programs, our current students will join us and also industry professionals to share what it is that they do in the workplace. What might a career look like? And between high school and university, of course, we have scholarship programs to support students coming in. And once you join us at UTS, we have a big community that you can jump into from day one. And within this community, we have a lot of different social events and also professional networking. And we also have a mentoring program with industry where a student will be paired with an industry mentor for one year to get some advice and guidance on what does a career journey look like or what could it look like? Well, how could your studies get you to where you would like to be? What subjects and internships would be most beneficial? What workplaces uh, uh, work for you? And then community. Underlying everything that we do is a strong community. Finding people like you, studying with you, and who could be your future network as you emerge as a professional from your degree program. So the scholarships that I'll talk about today include the Women in Engineering Cooperative Scholarship. So this is open to all engineering degree programs. Then we have the Bachelor of IT Cooperative Scholarship, specific to the Bachelor of IT program. And then we have the Faculty Women in Engineering and IT Scholarship. And this is open to all degree programs in engineering and IT, including double degrees. So the Women in Engineering Cooperative Scholarship is valued at $66,000 over four years. And it also includes three internships throughout your degree program. And this internship component is embedded within the Diploma of Professional Engineering Practice. So what this looks like in your five-year degree program is that you'll have your first industry internship at the end of first year. So getting that real world experience early on. That's a three month internship to get you started. And then you will have two six month internships in your second and fourth year. And these internships will be with different industry partners so that you get that breadth of experience across different industries. So who might be the industry partners? These are our sponsors from the 2020 cohort. And you'll see that there are a number of different companies across civil, electrical, mechanical, software, and data engineering. So the second co-op scholarship that we have is the Bachelor of Information Technology. And this is a three-year scholarship that is $49,500 in financial support. And it includes two six-month industry placements. So this degree program is very much the combination between business and IT. So if that's more your interest, please apply for this one. Although we have multiple scholarships here, it doesn't mean that you have to choose one. You're most welcome to apply for all of them and then see how you go, because then you have the choice uh, to choose between different scholarships. If you're not quite sure which degree program suits you just yet. The third scholarship we have is the Faculty Scholarship for Women in Engineering and IT. And this is a one year scholarship with $10,000 in financial support. So this is open to any degree program in the faculty, engineering, IT, computing science, and also double degrees. So if you're wanting to study a double degree, this is the only scholarship that's available to you because double degrees are not eligible for the cooperative scholarships because of the internship components embedded into those degrees. We do have a range of other scholarships available, so please have a look at our website. Make sure you apply for everything that is applicable to you because you've got to be in it to win it. And it doesn't mean that there aren't scholarships for you once you arrive at university with us. We have scholarships for our current students, so make sure that you have a look as well. 
You've heard a little bit from me about the types of scholarships available. Tanzi, one of our current scholars in software engineering, will be able to share what her experience is like being in the cooperative program. Thank you so much, Eva. Hi, guys. Um, as mentioned, I am currently in my third year of um, studying a Bachelor of Software Engineering here at UTS. So that means looking at the diagram, I've completed my first and second industry placement. So in my first year of university, I um, for the summer, I uh, interned at a company called Rice Tech Global. So I was a junior developer there. And I stayed on with the company to work part time throughout my second year until my second semester. So then I moved to another company called Cuscal and I was interning with them for six months. And honestly, the best part of this scholarship is how much experience you get exposed to the real world. Like moving, um, comparing myself and all this industry um, experience I have to my friends that perhaps don't get exposed to that. I know that I've picked up on a lot of soft skills, a lot of hard skills, and um, it's just challenged me in so many different ways. And I know that I'm ready for the future. And it's also shown me what I like and what I don't like. Even though it's my third third year of studying this, um, I've gone through so many roles and I've worked in so many teams that I've you know, been able to understand myself and where I see myself going in the future a bit more. Something that I thought I knew back in year 12 when I was um, you know, choosing this degree, choosing after my ATA came up, deciding what university I wanted to go through. So the main thing I wanted to highlight was um, I actually applied for both the Bachelor of IT and the Bachelor of Engineering, and um, I accepted of my BIT offer first. And the reason I did so was because, you know, I didn't actually have that much knowledge on what the course was, what I would be getting out of it. And after I accepted my BIT course, I told, I always knew I wanted to be um, someone technical and challenge myself technically. And I really loved maths and I was always more drawn to the engineering aspect. So. I decided to accept my second offer, which was the um, co-op engineering offer. And sometimes you think in year 12, you know exactly when, what you want to do and you know your ATAR and your HSC subjects reflect that. And you think that you know, you're working towards the single goal, but it's really important as students for you that you need to keep your options open because you don't really know what it's going to bring at the end of the day or what you're going to do or how you're going to how you're going to come to a situation, you know, and it's fine if you like um, think you're going to be working towards a specific degree. And then in the last moment, you're like, no, that's actually not what I want to do. I want to do this. So my advice to you as students is if you're in year 11, year 12, year eight, year nine, is just to keep your options open. And the reason why I decided to do technology and something in IT was because it was always, um, I was always really interested about what's new, what's, how can we make things better? How can we change some of the practices that we have now. And if you look at our world right now, a lot of the things are actually underpinned by technology. And without technology, I don't know how we'd be able to do any of this. Like if, if someone was to tell you back when I chose my degree, you know, in three years time, everything will, you won't be able to see anyone, you know, everything will have to be online. You know, you wouldn't expect that. And I think it's been really amazing to see that technology has transformed so many of the workplaces and, um, I've been working remotely for about four months now and we've, we, they just announced that we're going to be working remotely for the rest of the year. So it's really um, good to be part of that change to see that you know what you're learning at university, what you're learning at work is implemented in the real world. And that's personally why I got into um, engineering and IT because I want to challenge myself. I want to make things happen and compared to other people that you, you know want to are more focused on business and IT so my second advice to you will be engineering is um for like it's more practical I would say and even though you think that you know you're not good at maths or you know engineering requires a lot of maths actually at UTS we're really fortunate because the way that the course is structured is there's practical experience you've got two mathematics subject and you've got a lot of help in those as well like even though I did do three unit maths, I, by the time that I did the math subjects at university, I actually remembered nothing because, you know, you go on a three month break after HSC, everything's new at uni, everything's really exciting. So I wouldn't stress too much about the actual subjects. There's a lot of help available. There's, you know, we, um, UTS has peer support and they have help groups as well. So some subjects have extra help apart from your tutors and lectures. Everyone's really friendly here. There's you know, if you if you come in through one of our programs, um, 
the We at and the Koala programs, there's a whole cohort of people. A lot of my friends are from those programs and we have like a really nice community. And I really miss being on campus, but I know being um, online as well hasn't made a difference because we're still having these virtual catch ups. So regardless of what the situation is next year or how it's like, you need to do what you're passionate about and you need to do something that you're going to enjoy. And and don't let any of these preconceived notions hold you back saying, you know, engineering requires a lot of maths. I need to be a, a certain stereotype. I need to be a certain gender in order to do this. It's, you know, it's none of that is how we function at UTS. And it's so open. And after like, uh, I actually didn't consider coming to UTS at all. My first preference was UNSW. And when I got my A ton, when I got everything, I was um, initially going to accept my UNSW offer, but you know, something inside me just said, you know, we're growing, we're moving really rapidly, we're changing. And that's something I like about UTS. So that's all I wanted to say. If you have any questions about my um, personal experience, how I got here, um, let me know. Thank you so much. So what are the next steps from here? This is the scholarship process for the rest of the year. All the applications will close on the 6th of September, so make sure that you get your application in on time and you can apply at any point up until that deadline. If you've got any questions or you'd like more information, please contact us or join us for Open Week between the 31st of August and the 5th of September. We'll have a scholarship application workshop for the 3rd of September in the evening and I've got more details later in this session and please feel free to join us. Then, once we've shortlisted the applications, we will have an interview round in the first week of October before your Year 12 exams, because we know it's a busy period. And then we'll notify you of the interview outcome, whether you've been shortlisted from that process. And once we've received your ATAR results on the 18th of December, we'll give you a call to let you know of your overall scholarship outcome. So tips. How might you do well? What do we want to know? We want to know about you. So please be honest. Tell us your story. What it is that interests you about engineering and IT? What would you like to study and why? What motivates you? You don't need to have existing experience in engineering and IT. What we're looking for is interest and experience in engineering skills and IT skills. What does that mean? Teamwork. It could mean design, creative thinking, thinking outside the box. So include any examples where you can. Work experience matters as well. A casual part-time job means that you can work in a team and you've got time management. This all matters. Interview. The interviews will be in the first week of October and the interview panel is very friendly, don't worry. It's an industry partner and an UTS academic. They just want to know a little bit more about you to expand on what you've shared with us in your application. Then how we choose the scholarships is based on the balance of the interview score and your ATAR. So tips for the interview is that you don't need to prepare. We want you to come as authentic you and we want to hear more about what you've told us in your application. So make sure you do review what you've written. And we'll have an interview preparation workshop uh, if you've got any questions about the process. But this is just an approach to share with you uh, to do well in an interview called the STAR approach. What happens after the interview? We'll let you know of the outcome, whether you've been shortlisted from the interviews. And then once we receive your ATAR on the 18th of December, we'll give you a call with the overall scholarship outcome. And there is a short turnaround time because the UAP preferences deadline is the next day. So we just need to know by 3 p.m. on the 19th of December whether you'd like to accept the scholarship or not. So these are the websites to complete your application, both for the Women in Engineering and IT and the Bachelor of Information Technology. If you're not quite sure which degree program you'd like to choose, especially for the Women in Engineering Cooperative Scholarship, because you have to choose a major, whether that is mechanical engineering, civil, data or software, have a look at our website. There's a lot more information about what's the difference between these degree programs? What subjects might you be studying? You can choose more than one discipline on your application, but we will need to allocate you to one interview panel. So make sure you let us know which your strongest preference is. I also wanted to share with you adjustment points. So these are points that are added to your raw ATAR to give you a selection rank, which is what the UAC offers are made based on. So the maximum number of adjustment points that you can receive at UTS is 13. And there are different opportunities from which you can receive adjustment points, and this means Things like including and completing the UTS Engineering and IT questionnaire, which is an online questionnaire where you share with us your motivation for studying engineering and IT. Also, if you've done well in your year 12 results, you can receive adjustment points. 
And also, if you come from a different background or certain circumstances, which are eligible for adjustment points. At UTS, we also recognise the importance of having a balanced engineering and IT profession. So all women applicants applying for 2021 will receive 10 adjustment points for any degree program, including combined degrees, double degrees in the Faculty of Engineering and IT. So keep in contact with us if you've got any questions or you'd like more information. For more information about the degree programs, please contact the faculty, FEIT. If you've got more information, if you'd like more information about the Women in Engineering and IT program or the Women in Engineering and IT scholarships, please contact at our website, weit.uts.edu.au. What's next? We have our online scholarship application workshop on the 3rd of September in the evening, 5 to 6 p.m. So if you'd like to join us, please register on our website. We've also got some live Q&A sessions during Open Week, and we've got these on multiple days, so check out the schedule, come and meet the team and come some of our current students. We've also got information sessions on the different degree programs if you'd like to know more and have some questions. So thanks very much for joining and watching. We hope to be able to meet you and see you on campus soon.